Vanderbilt wilt is one of the most detrimental diseases in the tobacco industry. And the reason why is it usually leads to almost complete plant death. And if you look around me, you can see these plants here that uh, you can tell they're... You can't see the plants? Oh, okay. Now, the reason why it's so detrimental is that it often leads to complete plant death, like you can see in here in this plant. And the reason why that it does kill plants completely is Granville wilt is caused by a bacteria. Now, the bacteria can work its way into the stem of the plant, and much like bacteria inside of a human when we get an infection, the bacteria can reproduce really, really, really fast. So what happens is once the bacteria is in the stem, it reproduces so fast that it clogs the stem. So as you can see, these leaves have wilted, and that is because they just can't move any water up the stem of the tobacco plant. Now, oftentimes uh, you may notice, or you may be able to see in your field, one side of the tobacco plant has started to wilt. This can be an indicator of Granville wilt, but it's not always a, a complete sign that it's just Granville wilt if you see half the plant wilting. So a great way to tell if, Gran if you have Granville wilt in your field, if you're starting to see some wilting symptoms, is if you take out the plant, cut the uh, stem completely off above um, where the, the soil line is and immerse that in a jar of water. Now by doing this, what you can have happen is what's called bacterial streaming. That bacteria reproduces so fast that it, it plugs that xylem water conducting elements of the plant. So if you immerse that plant in a jar of water, that bacteria will actually just stream out of the plant because there's so much of it. And this can be a really quick way to tell if the symptoms that you're seeing in your field is indeed bacterial wilt or if it's something else um, that might be causing that plant death. Now it's important when you're doing a bacterial streaming test to be patient because if the plant is a little water stress, what'll happen is those leaves are kind of pulling against that bacteria. And so when you immerse it in the water, it's less likely that the bacteria will stream out. So be very patient when you put it in the water and just watch to see if the bacteria comes out. Also, when you're doing this, make sure that if there is a lot of sediment on the outside of the plant, that you're not just seeing the, the soil slough off of the plant, you actually are seeing the bacteria. Now the difference usually is the bacteria will keep streaming and it kind of comes out in little wisps versus the soil has a tendency just kind of to fall down and murky the water. Another method for determining if you have Granville wilt is if you slice open the stem, often you'll see a brownish or reddish discoloration of the stem that can kind of show that that bacteria is killing off the stem. Now you have to be careful with this because there are a lot of other diseases of tobacco that can have similar stem um, you know, effects. So I think the bacterial streaming is one of the best methods in order to determine if you do have Granville wilt. Now Granville wilt is favored by wet and warm soil conditions. So if you have Granville wilt bacteria in your soil, they will naturally be drawn to the roots of your tobacco plants and they will start forming colonies around the roots. Now all that needs to happen is a small wound to the root either from natural root growth or from something like lay-by, or maybe if you had some wind damage. And then once that happens, the bacteria is able to get into the plant and cause the disease that we see. So in order to manage Granville wilt in our tobacco fields, you need to have a multi-pronged approach or an integrated pest management approach to managing the disease. And that's because it's such a difficult disease to manage. So all this really means is you're going to try a variety of different methods and you're going to have much better success. Now, a great place to start is choosing resistant varieties of tobacco. So starting out with a plant that's already naturally less susceptible to the bacteria. Another great way to reduce the amount of bacteria that exists in your soil is doing a rotation. So don't plant tobacco straight after tobacco. Usually NC State recommends a four year rotation. And this is important when you're doing your rotation to choose different plants that are not host to that bacteria. Otherwise you're just perpetuating the cycle. So soybeans, lesbadisa, and other small grains are great rotational crops that are not host to the specific bacteria. Another method for helping control Granville wilt is using chemical control. 
So if you have questions on any of these things, you can reach out to your local extension agent. Here in North Carolina, we have a robust network of extension agents, and we'd be more than happy to help you out in any way that we can in helping you control your Granville will.